This happened back in 1989 or 1990 when my mom was 15 or 16. She was working a full-time job as a cashier at a grocery store. Anyway, on to the story. My mom was doing her job, checking people out, deal with customers, etc. When a customer who I'll call G came in to her line and said hi to her, my mom thought nothing of it as most people did that. The next time G came in, he had details about my uncles who were young children at the time. This freaked my mom out a little bit. The next time he showed up, he had info about my grandfather and my grandmother. This terrified my mom as she was just a teenager. Her biggest fear was this guy was stalking her somehow. My mother told my grandma what was going on which my grandma realized that it was a neighbor's brother. In freshman year of middle school, sixth grade, there was a once a week group therapy session with developmentally delayed kids that involved them doing some crafts activities or playing with Legos or watching a movie as a group. It was half regular ed and half developmentally challenged and the regular ed kids could sign up for it. I signed up pretty instantly as it meant an escape from history once a week. One of my best friends at the time had the same idea, and it basically turned into a second lunch period for us. The whole thing was overseen by a therapist named Bruce, and it was generally pretty laid back. Bruce was an overweight 50-ish balding guy with the attitude and general appearance of Santa Claus. He ran most of the school's extracurriculars and was pretty much universally liked. The other important player in this story was a kid who I'll call G. You know what that stereotype of psychopaths being obsessed with animal torture as a kid? This was dead on G. He'd regularly tell these long excited stories during group about how much fun he had last week tearing the leg off of a squirrel he caught in his live trap or other similar things. Most of us just sort of ignored him as it was just sort of assumed that he was all talk and just making up gross stuff to get attention. So one week we were playing with Play-Doh since it was a developmental delayed group. The huge tub of Play-Doh had long since assumed a uniform shape of turd brown and the general drive was to get people to build things and tell stories about them. Most people just built dinosaurs or threw clay at each other. G, for whatever reason, had a huge flat squirrel slab laid out on a building floor, large pillars on the corners. He eventually put a roof on it, which wouldn't stay on due to the lack of interior supports. The regular ed kids would always leave a few minutes early as the group ran right into the start of the next period and we'd need time to get to class. I was no different and walked out while Bruce and the developmentally delayed kids were smashing Play-Doh, giggling and throwing chunks of turd dough back into the bin. I got to my next class and the teacher wasn't there. Nobody knew what was going on. About 10 minutes later, she finally showed up looking frizzed out and wouldn't give us any information other than something happened that needed staff attention. Being sixth graders, we went nuts with speculation. A few hours later, I ran into the friend from group who was visibly jumpy and disturbed. He wouldn't tell me why other than mentioning that therapy group was cancelled indefinitely. I kept prying for information and eventually got the story out of him. So during the cleanup, the Play-Doh had been 
compacted back into its tub. This involved lots of smashing Play-Doh sculptures, a bit that the developmentally delayed kids greatly enjoyed to the point where they tried to smash other people's stuff. G's house was one of the last things to go. He smashed down two columns, let one of the other kids smash another, and finally dared Bruce to smash the last one really hard. The last one with the pocket knife in it. I never saw either Bruce or G ever again. So I am still young, but I won't say how young for privacy reasons, but one morning, two to four years ago, I don't know, I came downstairs to play on my Xbox One as I usually do, and as I am playing I see a woman out of the corner of my eye just staring at me. I see her in so much detail yet she is partially transparent. She is wearing one of those big hats from the early 1900s or 1920s maybe. I don't know, I don't study fashion. But when I see her, I just get stuck in this kind of trance as she stared at me. And when I can finally move again, I turn my head to look and she is just gone. I went around the corner to check the kitchen and nothing. I go around through the pantry and that area and there is nothing there. Now I know it could have just been my young mind playing tricks on me. This all started when I was about 12. I'm 19 now. My sister, Zoe, father, stepmother at the time, and two daughters, Jade, my age, and Mandy, my sister's age, were camping. We had only been there for a day, and everything was fine. Then me and my sisters decided we were going to go to the stream by ourselves. My father gave us a walkie-talkie so we could keep in contact while we were gone. Now, the place we were going to was surrounded by bush. And to get there, you had to go down a little path through it. We spent a while with our shoes off, splashing in the water when Jade said she could see someone standing amongst the trees. We all looked and saw a figure. It was black. You could tell it was the shape of a man. You couldn't see the face. We stared for a few seconds, and then he disappeared. So we just ignored it and kept playing in the water, but I felt a little uneasy. A while later, we all looked back wanting to know if he was still there, and he was. Everything was silent. I could hardly hear the rapids in the little stream. We stopped looking. After about 20 minutes, we headed back to the campsite. My sisters lingered behind, and I was about 20 meters ahead of them, but we couldn't see each other. I heard a twig snap behind me, and I turned to look. Assumed they had caught up to me. Nope. I turned to see the tall, dark figure literally a foot behind me. I started to run. The whole time I could feel him close behind me. I ran as fast as I could until I was out in the open campground. He was gone. My sisters came out not long after, and I told them what had happened. I asked, but none of them had seen him behind me. They were too far behind, and the path was windy, so they were around a corner from me most of the time. Throughout our camping trip, we didn't see him around as much, but occasionally would see him just standing there. Fast forward a couple of years and we go back there with my father's new girlfriend and her daughter Stella. I can't recall this trip as much, but I know for a fact that Stella saw him too. Three years ago, I started seeing him at my fucking house. Just anywhere and everywhere, really. One day, I was out in the backyard and I started to lean down to pat my cat when in my peripheral vision I saw him right behind me. I ignored him as he's never really done anything harmful really. Look solely at my cat as to block him out. As I do, I feel a hand grab my hair and tug. I immediately spun around. Nothing there. I fucked off inside as I was a bit spooked. 
I now live with my boyfriend and can't say 100% if I've seen it again. I sometimes see shadows move behind me in the reflection of the TV, but when I look behind me, there's nothing. So, I just chalk it up to a trick of the light. I did hear something recently. This is the most recent event I have had. My boyfriend's alarm went off for work, waking me up too. He switched it off, but lay in bed a bit longer. I was awake then, facing my boyfriend's back. One eye closed as it was smushed against the pillow. Suddenly, I shit you not, I hear someone whisper my name in my ear. It was so clear, and I could even feel cold breath on me. I sat up and said to my boyfriend, Did you say my name? He looked confused. He was just sitting there playing on his phone. No. He said he hadn't. Which I believed him because it was a female's voice. This doesn't really relate to my other experience, but I thought I'd throw it in there anyway. I was on camp and I hate camping, but as a leader, so I had to. I had brought my laptop to entertain me when I got there. They set up the main tent when one of my friends named Anthony and the leader came up and we were joking about when a gray blur ran across the field that made up our campsite. We both waited until every scout was there said the rules that began cooking our food. Now this is survival camp and the scout collected firewood and I light the fire and we started cooking rabbit when one of the campers screamed at two bright eyes were staring out of a tree then I did a thing I regret I yelled good joke now get the hell out of here my friend said to calm down and named his flashlight at the tree and we saw the gray blur again after a one more hour it was time to go to sleep so we showed the scouts to their tents and moved to our own i opened my laptop to get some work done when i heard a scream where i ran outside and i looked around and saw a group of scouts running towards me i looked around and i saw the bright eyes staring near their tent i took the scout into the main tent and asked them what they saw and they, one of them said, we not sure. I ask for any details and the give me one thing, it was gray. I woke up Anthony and we both walked out. We had garbed kitchen knives. Then we walked up and saw a large gray shape. What the fuck are you playing at? Anthony yelled and it turned around. It was a large shape. It gave an unhuman screech before running off into the woods. The next day, we told the camper to pack up their stuff and move out when we were moving. I saw a gray blur on the edge of the wood. I also got a question. Anyone know what the hell the gray thing was? If you are new, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel as it really helps me out. And if you are already subscribed, welcome back and thank you for subscribing.